Welcome back, guys. It is week nine, college football season. We're going to see the Citadel Bulldogs versus the Mercer Bears. So it's a Southern Conference matchup. Two and five, not off to a yeah. great start to the season. Not off to a really good season <laughs> at Yeah, all. just not off to a good season <laughs> in general. But neither are my Gamecocks. And uh, every time I hear the Citadel Bulldogs, I always think about that infamous upset over my South Carolina Gamecocks. That's a very interesting call. Clock running fourth and ten. Throw underneath Wilds. And he is short. Short of the first down. And the Citadel Bulldogs are going to win the football game. It's just crazy how a triple option team could just take down the up. SEC team. It's crazy, man. Uh, we got our shortest drive today. We'll do quick score predictions. We're kind of in a hurry today and kind of behind. I'm actually gonna go with the the spooky upset today. Yeah. I'm gonna go with Citadel pulling off the upset, 24 to 13. I don't think it's gonna be a spooky upset, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> I think Citadel is gonna live up to its spooky, spooky season yeah. and continue to lose. And I think the final score is going to be 17-10. We are right here at the stadium. We got yeah. cadets walking. Yeah. Tristan, let's just go ahead and flip it. Yeah. Do a quick flip. It just looks like the inside of a mall. Down here we we have a mall called Dove Square Mall and it looks just like this. Like a little run down, a little old, but still a couple people that show up here and there. And it still smells good because it's like they have a movie theater around here. So this is cool. It's got a cathedral castle kind of vibe to it, kind of like the top of Virginia Tech, except that's the whole stadium. Oh! Yeah, so instead of the 50-yard line, uh, they like to meet at the 40-yard line. So you see he's got a pretty decent scoreboard around here. But on the opposing side, this tiny little thing right here. I didn't even think that was an electronic scoreboard right there. I thought it was just like a poster. Oh my god. I don't know what it is with teams in 2021 and triple option, but I just don't understand how it's effective and how it's consistent. I think, I think it's all about discipline. I think it's discipline. I think they're only allowed to do that. How good can you be? Oh my god. You know, I guess one good thing about the triple option is that the, the clock does run down pretty fast. Games go by quick, even though they're kind of boring. <laughs> and that is a beacon. First down! Oh my First god. Nobody. Bro. <laughs> Straight up crickets, dogs. At least the first time, one person said first down. Here's that, here's that little underbite right there. But he has like one tooth sticking out. <laughs> that is sick. You know, if you're a safety defending the triple option, that's like, it's like heaven on earth. It's just like an instant day off for you. Until they freaking send the tight end yeah. deep. Wow, of course that happens. 1960, all the way to 2021, still running that triple option. Yes, sir! I kind of wonder, like, well, they haven't really played the most music by between, 54. like, plays and everything, and but they also haven't had a band, like, anything, fight songs going. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 
trash can. <laughs> Apparently it went right over that net over there. And if you're over there, you can get a souvenir. What a weird formation. <laughs> we are at the top of the stands. It's still an amazing view. And you can say, like, yeah, there's no away section. It works in their favor here. And it treats the fans with great views of the Ravenel Bridge and the rest of downtown Charleston. It's beautiful. That's not no popcorn, but oh look, Hokey Stone. All right, folks. Well, that game escalated really quickly. Well, the score was a 14-7 at halftime, <laughs> turned into a 34-7 blowout late in the fourth quarter. Yeah, like it was 17-7 at the start of like with 10 minutes left in the game. I, I used to root for the home team every time, but you know sometimes you just gotta. Gotta, gotta go be, with your gut you sometimes. Yeah. There was still a lot of fun, great scenery that we'll get into later, but... Sure. All right, we'll see you at the review. Hello, everyone. It's officially November 1st, so you know what that means. That's good. I like it. We here at the Road Team Reviews do not skimp out on Christmas. It's my favorite holiday of the year, second only to uh, opening day of college football season. So we will have our old buddy Vinny joining us. Say hey to Vinny. It's only rude if you don't say hey to him. Yeah, dead eyes staring at you. Get used to it, because he ain't going nowhere. And I'm watching y'all. I think Vinny wants to get this review started. Let's get it started. Let's get into it with stadium structure. It's uh, kind of unique. This stadium once fit 21,000 people, had two full grandstands, home and away side. And then back in 2006, they just demolished the one side. Do we know the history? I don't really I'm not know. sure if it's, let's just say. So after just doing a quick, just <laughs> 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 doing a quick little update on being spoken, huh? Beanie, what you think? <laughs> hey, where's the freaking gabagoo? So after some quick research, basically just wasn't the best condition, best shape, uh, wasn't structurally sound anymore, apparently. It was kind of deteriorating, so they just demolished it. Since then, they've just, they put, uh, I think, like a temporary aluminum small bleacher maybe fits like yeah, I don't, 200 people at most. Yeah, I don't think it's like a permanent thing for this stadium. Yeah. I think that one away stand looked like it was like a great part of that stadium. Yeah, like it looked like a top tier. Well, not top tier, but <laughs> like I don't know, kind of like how Wake Forest has, you know, just two big grandstands on either side. But yeah, they put this temporary stand in, uh, I think 2019. Yeah. The way the wording is that they're planning to rebuild it but now it's 2021 and yeah. it doesn't seem like there's been much in motion for it. Ever since that they tore down that other section of the stadium, I mean, the capacity pretty much just, just dropped in half. It went from maximum of like 21,000 to about like 10, 11,000. So yeah. as far as structure, just a big aluminum stand. They do kind of cover it up nicely with cement foundation around it. I think out of all the college stadiums that we've been to, we, uh, we have some different theme that kind of attaches to it. Like, you know, how Coastal Carolina was the Baja Blast Field. Georgia State was the Nacho Fries. Now, the Citadel is now proclaimed as the White Castle of college football stadiums. Yeah, and that's the most uh, spot on one, if you ask me. Like the castle type of aesthetic that it had kind of looked like the top of that press box at Virginia Tech, so. But more prominent. 
The field house continued with that same theme. I mean, nothing crazy with it, but it was kind of neat that they continued that, that military look. The scoreboard on our side was actually pretty nice. It was all electric and it gave off a pretty good sound. They did not play much music at all during in yeah. between plays. It was probably mm -hmm. the least amount. So there is this white, pretty sad looking wall behind the scoreboard that needs a fresh coat of paint. Yeah, it just it looks, kinda looks like a deteriorating wall and yeah. There's like it's not a it's not a rustic look, yeah. it's more like a rusty, yeah. torn down look. I think we can just get to our grades. Pretty much on the same thought here, I gave it a 65, which is a D. You know, because of all the new renovations and because of how they tore down the away section and how they didn't really update a lot of new things, it's primarily aluminum, so that's gonna take back from a lot of things. So because of that, I'm gonna have to give it a 67. All right, and on to atmosphere. Um, not so well. I never thought I would see the day where I would grade this lower than Indiana State, but it's looking like it. Yeah. I read this on an Instagram post from Barstool U, um, very popular post going around the college football community. Just a map of the worst college football atmospheres in each state. They did list the Citadel as the worst atmosphere in South Carolina. So is it true? Is it not true? We don't know yet. Yeah, we got a few more to go to, but right now uh, it's in the, the front running. This is one of the most quiet football games I've ever gone to. I hate to put the like, oh, it's like a high school game. <laughs> like, but this crowd was way more tame than your local Friday Night Lights. Yeah. Uh, when it was third down, they didn't. They like banged their feet on the aluminum. Stick. Hey, we like, contributed to it. So. Yeah, we did. You know, we tried. But that's just one of the most cop out like chance that's yeah. that's when like if you don't want to yell or get out of your comfort zone and yeah. act rowdy you just bang on the the stadium there was like there's two things that i noticed <laughs> there's two <laughs> people that <laughs> cheered <laughs> there were literally like two types of people just this this one guy yeah. just walking around from the start to the end of the stadium at the home section just like get everyone hyped like let's go let's go and you know what like i'm proud of him shout out to him for trying to get him going but uh not to spoil my grade, but he gave like 30 points to my atmosphere grade, just him. He, he right kind of put it on his back right there. Yeah. They didn't do any kind of like between the quarters, like games, like some PR groups or Especially teams. Especially like Virginia Tech. Will go. Uh, but yeah, they didn't do none of that. It was almost like there were lulls where there was absolutely no cheering or uh, commentary. So it was just like coaches and players screaming. Yeah, it was pretty bad. And like I said, I gave 30 points to this awesome fan and then the other 11, because we were at a football game. Yeah. You gotta have a default 10 points just, just kinda, for being there. Just kinda meets the bare minimum. So mine was a 41 for atmosphere, which is an F by the way. Guys, I'm sorry to give this to you, but I have to give y'all 40. Like, I, I even compare this to other military schools, like Army, Navy, Air Force, all the, all the other schools like that. VMI. Just, VMI. Like, they just have such a passionate fan base regardless of their record. And, you know, when you put Citadel in the mix, like, you know. Also, this team has had success. They like, did. they were SOCON champs back in 2016. Mm -hmm. have gone on some FCS. Yeah. Or made FCS playoff appearances. So, like, knocked off South Carolina just a few years ago. Like, yeah. Uh, I get reminded every year, <laughs> so. <laughs> we finally have something to talk about. That's the scenic value. This one caught me kind of by surprise. Yeah, so Charleston is obviously a beautiful city, uh, whether it be the nature setting, the historic downtown Charleston, or the Ravenel Bridge. And the Citadel does a pretty good job of capturing that. If there's one negative thing I would say about the scenic value is that right behind those walls where the scoreboard are is just like this like small tennis court, or it's like a couple of tennis courts right by. And I was kind of getting distracted. And uh, I don't know, it was, just, it was just weird because there's really not any enclosement towards the end of the stadium so you kind of see like a little bit of like the small little neighborhood and just these weird tennis courts around there i don't know it was just kind of distracting to me but yeah i mean if you're up at the top you do get a pretty cool view of the marsh back there yeah so i thought that was cool too yeah going uh ahead with the scenic value grade i gave it an 89 a b plus like i said because of that one little drawback in the end zone because that's where we were sitting and that's what i saw personally um so yeah my final score is going to be an 80. 
On to our next section, which is history and tradition. Obviously, this is a military school and very military driven. First impression that you see from this, a bunch of cadets line up on Moultrie Street with a bunch of Charlestonians and a lot of alumni as well. From Moultrie Street all the way into the, into the stadium, they do some kind of formation on the field and they do this cool lineup and it kind of builds up towards the entrance, which uh, I thought was really cool. That actually forced them to do the coin toss at the 40 yard line. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen it at the 40 was before. was kind of funny. I have some history as far as uh, their FCS championship or playoff appearances, SOCON championships. At halftime, they honored the 1960 Tangerine Bowl championship yes, team. Yes, sir. So shout out to them. Uh, as far as football, they don't have many like cheers. The only thing that I can remember yeah. is the cannon. And yes. you know, the thing about the cannon is that I think, uh, I think their cannon gives Skipper from Virginia yeah. Tech a run for its money. So that is the best football cannon I've ever seen. <clears throat> Some cannons you can tell like they're just like big, like noisemakers. This looked like a true Revolutionary War oh, yeah. cannon. They had a couple of them too. When they fired this thing, just smoke. You felt that. Well, you yeah, felt well, that. the whole stadium shook. I think it was the only time the stadium shook. <laughs> the crowd wasn't shaking that stadium, but. Oh, too soon. Uh, <laughs> you think of anything else? No, nothing much for tradition. Like, but but now that we're talking about history, that's a different story. One cool fact about this stadium was that I believe in 1999, again like national tension, there were remnants of crew. There was like there was remnants of crewmen from the HL Hunley found like underneath the stadium. Yeah, which is insane. So uh, I think we looked it up, and it said it was like a Mariners graveyard back in the day. 1999. Uh, as Tristan mentioned, when they dug up all these bodies and like all these old graves, it's because it was an old Mariner's graveyard. And so you had all kinds of crewmen from the 1800s that were buried here. And uh, it's pretty cool. This actually gained like uh, attention. Ryan McGee with ESPN, he did a Halloween special article where he's like doing all the ghosts and spooky haunted yeah. facts and Citadels was on there. That's Maybe. your spooky fact right there. Uh, they had pretty cool plaques and um, each class kind of had their own thing like gift to the stadium or university maybe. There was one over one of the walkways into the stadium. So they just had all of these old like plaques and kind of relics hidden throughout uh, the stadium. There was one at the base of the bleacher we walked past. It seemed like everywhere you looked there was something that and history or tradition with it. So we've talked about this enough, uh, but we're both on the same page here. Gave it an 88, it's double B, 88. Mm -hmm. Last but certainly not least, because that title is held to Citadel's atmosphere, field design. Let's get it. We uh, both like this field. Me personally, it's my favorite turf field, aside from Coastal, but Coastal's kind of its own thing with that old Samsung field. Not Samsung. Nope. Not iPhone or anything. Just Samsung. Yeah, this is named after Bill Sansom, who donated $1.5 million to have this artificial turf installed. Like, he just paid for the whole thing. Uh, it was actually just installed last year, so maybe that's why it looks like so fresh and new. I like the painted end zones. Kind of like the, the older font on them, just very traditional style. Like the 50 yard line definitely had that nice looking C logo on it. I like that different tone of blue on the sidelines as well. Uh -huh. We had also had mentioned before, I love when they put the name of the field on the turf and also had the SOCON logo in that Citadel blue. So just all the features I like the field to have. Plus I like the colors. You know us, we're not the biggest fans of turf, but if you do have turf, at least execute it right. And I think uh, they did it, did it pretty well. Nothing else to be said, I gave it an 85. And my final grade, it's gonna be an 88. So when we put it all together, uh, my final score for the Citadel at Haygood Stadium uh, was a 69.3, which is a D plus. And my final score is gonna be a 68.1. Got two D pluses. When we averaged those together, it came out to be a 68.7. And then yes, again. Do we even need to say it? Yeah, you know, you know what's coming. So plus one to that, final score for Hey Good Stadium in Charleston, South Carolina, the Citadel. It's a 69.7. Nice. We didn't mean for that to happen. 
Literally could not have come out any better. Yeah, those D pluses are just kind of weird like that. So yeah, this was a game, uh, it was a really hectic weekend for us. I had to move out of an apartment. Tristan was nice enough to help with that and then Halloween plans that we both had. Uh, this was just a perfect game for us to squeeze in there. Yeah. Worked out nicely, so glad we got to make it into a stadium this weekend. This was one that I was kind of hesitant about, was not too excited for, and same had a much better time. But the thing is, is every college football stadium, every weekend, I just come in with no expectations, and usually when you don't have any expectations, it could be the best time of your life, the worst time of your life, or just kind of in between, so you know. Is it the worst college football experience in South Carolina? We don't know yet, but we will find out. As this video comes to a close, you know what to do. Please hit that like button, and then move over and hit that subscribe button, and hit that uh, little bell button next. And yes, we get it. We may be notorious for going to Sunbelt schools the past couple weeks, but you know, it's been a while since we've been to an FCS stadium, and uh, you know, we're, we're looking to change that up a little bit in the next couple weeks, so uh, let us know. What, what conference would you like us to go to next? Yeah, just let us know. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Please comment what you would like Tristan to bring you for Christmas. And as always, folks, we will see you next week on the road and on game day. All right, and this is Road Team Reviews. We're out.